Welcome back, guys. Uh, so the summer is fading away slowly, and um, I reached the end of my uh, vacations, my holidays. Uh, I've just returned with my family from the camper van um, Romanian trip that we've had with our two kids and with our in-laws, and it was a great experience to explore explore our beautiful country, Romania. And uh, I definitely recommend anybody to to do this kind of um, holiday with the camper vans or recreational vans as you as you wish. Um, and uh, it will be definitely a great experience for you. So let's get diving into our topics related to our project. Um, it's been a month since my last upload because of the summer, of course. But uh, today we will continue with our project for the e-commerce part and um, we'll continue um, with the attributes of the product attributes and the product attributes options or values. I've done some coding um, in the past few days because I had no, I had, I haven't lots, lots of time, but um, I will show what I've done. Uh, of course, there will be, there are multiple ways of implementing this kind of relationships between the attributes and attribute values. So let me just uh, show you what what I've done. So first of all, we have here the the we have our own uh, project. Uh, before this, we didn't have any front end, but now we have a small front end here, which is uh, responsive, of course. And also, if I switch on the dark mode, uh, it will it's it changes its um, um, CSS settings. Okay, so let me just sign in to the admin. Or firstly, let's just sign in here. Let's log out firstly, and you will see that our menu is gone now. But if we log in back, okay, password. Um, we have a different landing page for this, the dashboard. And also we have the menus, the admin panel, my profile settings. These are mockups. Uh, besides the logout and the admin panel. And also we have a, a sample contact page with what I've uh, put here. And also I have a flyout menu get, with categories and the home, which is just a dummy text of uh, different uh, areas. And of course I have the admin panel. So what is new here that I've made the product, which is uh, just uh, going to the categories now, but um, I have the products menu with the attributes. It's not styled yet, but it will be styled. So the, the main idea between the uh, in the e-commerce is that uh, a product may have multiple attributes. So uh, let me just um, show you an example. For example, if you go to, to emag.ro, it's one of the biggest uh, e-commerce sites that I've known in Europe, at least. And let's search for iPhone, iPhone, or, or let's just search for Samsung TV. It's better there. So on the left side, as you can see, we have the uh, facets. It's it's called attributes or faceted navigation, and uh, each of these values it's representing a product or multiple products, of course. And uh, of course, all of these are set on the product. So for example, let's switch on this uh, class A and it says that there will be only one product on the page. So let's select that. And we only have one product because that only one product matches with, with this uh, attribute value and with this value. So if we go into the product, we go to the specifications, we will see all the product attributes that these products uh, do have. Okay, so we've checked this one. So how, uh, how do we do this? So for this, we will have the, uh, we have the attribute models, 
so uh, we have the attribute and also we have the attribute value one attribute may have multiple values as you can see we have defined it with we defined it with here with the uh, has many relationship and also uh, one attribute value belongs to one attribute okay this is how i've created it it can be many to many one to many uh, it doesn't matter this is my uh, implementation just for this project and let's just create an attribute let's call it color color uh, swatch for example in color and this can be a checkbox radio or select or drop down or whatever you would like to to call it we, we will call it the radio because we, we will want to allow only one selection for this is the attribute required uh if we define the product um, and uh, we um, link these this color attribute at the product creation it will be have to be um, completed uh, mandatory it will be a mandatory attribute is the attribute filterable yes uh, that means that on the front page um, Samsung on the front page you will have a new facet for this with the specified value okay so the color of course it will be required and it will be filterable so we have the color and now we can um, use a new color let's add blue blue sorry not blue blue red new one purple new one yellow and let's add the fifth one it will be called green okay save so now we have one attribute as you can see we have the one attribute in the uh, color swatch it's the id 10 and also we have the id 10 we have all these uh, values for the 10 okay we have all these five values that we've entered before so this is how this works okay so let me just show you how i've uh, de developed all these attribute and attribute values in in some simple words okay so um it's a basic concept this can be done way more complicated than this but this is a perfect use case and it's working extremely well so we have this um, attribute and attribute values for the attributes i've made a repository uh, just to use the repository pattern just for um, knowledge share of course um, this is also a good example to have your code um, do only what you want to do and you allow your developers um, if you work in a team just to implement the methods that you are willing to uh, let them implement so for this i've made the attribute uh, contract which is an interface of course and also i have this um, these uh, functions which are um, which will uh, use which will be used in the attribute repository and also you can see here all the functions that the interface uh, defines and everything is defined here correspond correspondently okay so it's not a big deal but um, it's order it's it's uh, an arranged code and it looks uh, great maybe for smaller projects it's a bit overhead it's overkill but uh, for most of the large projects um, the pattern repository is working fine it's a bit of headache to understand it at the first but after you get the idea it will be uh, really it will have logic okay so i have the attribute repository which is injected in our attribute controller okay and uh, as you can see it's injected here uh, for this i've done a provider and i have the repository service provider which i've defined my own attribute contract which is the interface and the attribute repository which is the implementation of the interface 
okay as you can see it's implementing that contract okay and after that i've registered this in the app.php file to have this repository service provider uh, instantiated on every uh, application um, boot up or boot okay so i have the this attribute controller that has the attribute contract with the attribute repository injected and through this this attribute repository i have access to all my functions from this uh, file okay i have access to all of these files um, these methods sorry these functions and also if we define the new uh, method public function public function get all attribute values it's not needed but uh, it can be done and the id as you will see i have a warning that i have to declare all my files and if i refresh it i will have this error because i have no implementation of the newly created method so i've implemented this method and uh, if i save it the error will be gone okay this is the pattern, pattern repository pattern that you can use for your developers and this way your code will be organized okay let me just delete this okay and the error will be gone so we have the attribute and then uh, we have uh, the controller for example the for creating i have the get anim values because in the database let me just open this in the database i have the attributes and you will see that i have the structure of the front end type i have the checkbox radio text and text area so i not configuring this as a file but i'm i'm reading these from the database okay so um, i have the sorry here attribute value controller and the create get enum values okay so the enum values are read from the attributes table and i need the column of front end type so what this does it goes and launches a raw query in the database and we get the columns for the table where the field is in on types or um, sorry not in on times front end type and from that get the type and the type has a um, pattern which i've uh, pragmatched and get the matches values and uh, returns all the values um, in an array so let me just show you how this works let's create a new one add new okay so i have the array and let's see the anim values what does this have checkbox radio text text area in the database what do we have checkbox radio text text area exactly we have the same okay but let's add a new one and we'll say um let's say file it will be a file upload it's not uh, it's not a good use case but just to point point out the functionality okay and now we have five we have also the file okay so this is um, because this allows me to read the database's definition better to than to have a config file for this okay good open the debugger uh, stop the debugger and after that we have the create and we render the page now the store we have the store and we will store only the uh, from the request only these values which are sent through axios so let's test test name checkbox text and if we see in the back end we will save this and the attributes has this payload content front and types and all these attributes or all these values and we will save only those fields which are here uh, specified in the request only file okay now we go back in the to the index this is done by an inertia inertia js and the edit we have the same value but we get the attribute by the id and after that we have also the types 
and re-render the specified uh, component, which is a uh, view component. And then for the update, we have this only um, update the attribute by the ID. Also, you can uh, restrict this um, edit or delete to be able to edit only certain files, uh, certain attributes, or a user may edit only his own attributes, if you will. Okay, you can uh, extend this uh, in any di direction you want. Then we have the destroy, uh, for, sorry, for the update, we have the update request that has a specific uh, rule here. And it says that the code must be required, must be a string, and must be unique in the code column. And also we have this ignore this attribute ID. Because we are updating this attribute, we have uh, also the own attribute uh, defined in the this attribute. What happens when I when I update this code? If I press update, it will work. But if I remove this part of code, will it work again? Let's see. So if we uh, press the update, it says the code has already been taken. But if we go that ignore my own ID and update it, it will work. So this is a small trick that uh, allows you to update an existing uh, model in the database in a unique way. Okay, this, and also we have the destroy method, uh, we can which we can delete it, and um, also we have the attribute values. For the attribute values, I didn't use the repository pattern, just to use a sim a different uh, uh, different approach. For this, I've used the basic controller or kind of um, architecture. We have to get the values by the uh, attribute ID. Also, this can be done, uh, for example, with uh, uh, form model binding. And also, we have the repository just to get this attribute uh, by ID. And we respond with a JSON for the uh, view part and have the values at the values by request. I didn't do a um, attribute option or attribute value store request, but we can do something like that. No problem. Okay. For the sake of this uh, tutorial, we'll use the request and we have the update values. Uh, it's doing value by value. As you can update it here, as you can see, we have the front end. Let's add a packaging four liter. Okay. Or, okay, let's put a space here. Good. Then we have the destroy value um, and the uh, destroy value, of course. But now uh, let's see, create attributes. Um, yeah. And this is how, um, this is how it's done. Um, this is the attribute and attribute values. And for the next tutorial, we will go into the, pro uh, the product definition and also uh, maybe the brands definition. And after that, um, we will try to, um, build the front end for this and of course all of these attribute and attribute values will go into elastic search to be able to construct our faster navigation which will be faster and easier than to define our mysql queries and uh, all those kind of stuff so we'll use for this elastic search uh, with aggregations and um, different kind of filterings so uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and see you in the next one Cheers.